In this episode of Be Hooked, we'll have a look at the techniques you need to know to make this gorgeous summer top. Before we get started though, head over to BeHookedCrochet.com to view the written instructions. This pattern is available in different sizes and this tutorial acts as a supplement to the written instructions. Now you can find the pattern linked in the video description below as well as right here on your screen. This pattern is worked in three separate panels, all of which have a really similar repeat. We'll cover that repeat here in the tutorial and then all three of those panels are seamed together to finish the top. Now. Let's have a look at the first repeat. So each one of those three panels starts off with a really simple half double crochet repeat. Now what I recommend doing is working all three of these sections at once. So working your right front, your left front, and your back, getting them to the point where they measure the proper length, and then move on to the lace section. This is really what I call mindless crochet here because it's so simple. We're just working the half double crochet stitch. So to have an overview of the half double crochet, the first thing we'll do is create our slip knot. And of course I am making a smaller little section of the pattern. So for your particular foundation chain number, you wanna to refer to the written instructions. You can find that once again on my website, linked in the description and on your screen here. Follow that for the size that you're creating. I'm going to chain 19 for my little section, but know that yours is going to be very different. Then once you have your foundation chain started, we'll find the second chain from the hook. I like to look at it from this way. I'm pointing out that second chain, but I like to work in the back bump of that chain. I especially like to do that for garments and wearables because it gives you a nice cleaner and even a little bit more of a stretchy bottom edge. And that's what this is. We're working on the bottom edge of our top and I'll wrap the yarn once, insert my hook into that back loop only and half double crochet. So pull that through, yarn over and pull through all three. Now that chain one, we're not counting as a stitch and you'll see that as a trend throughout the whole pattern. We're gonna start off our half double crochet rows with a chain one, but we aren't counting that as a stitch. Now from here, I'll just work one half double crochet into every single chain. Again, I like to work in that back bump, but if you're more comfortable working somewhere else within the chain, by all means, do whatever you're comfortable with. All right, once you finish that first row, your work will look something like this, and we're ready to start on the second row. Now, I mentioned before that this chain one does not count as a stitch, so we'll just make that chain, we'll turn it over, and start working our next row. Now, because this chain one doesn't count as a stitch, then we need to make our first stitch in the same place where that chain one is coming from, or in other words, the last stitch of our previous row. And we'll work in half double crochets, for quite some time now, so you'll get used to this stitch. Work a half double crochet in your first stitch there, and then one half double crochet in each stitch. Now I'm catching both loops of the stitch. And when you get to your last stitch, you wanna make sure you don't forget that because then we'll drop a stitch. So I like to look at it from the top. I can see the V of that stitch so I know exactly where to work. And then if you look really closely right here, you'll see that chain one. So we'll finish up our last stitch here. And this is what it looks like after you have a couple rows of half double crochet. And for now, what I'd like you to do is work up the rest of this repeat. So right now, 
It doesn't matter which panel you're working on, we're going to crochet in this stitch pattern until it measures a certain length. Now you'll find that length in the written instructions, and of course they're different based on every different size that's available. So you'll want to refer to that to get your exact length, and when you take your measurement, you'll measure from this bottom edge or our starting edge here. Once it measures that target length, we'll fasten off this color, color A, and then we'll move on to color B. Now I mentioned before that what I like to do is kind of work in batches here. So because I know I'm making three panels with basically the same stitch pattern, I like to work all three of those panels to get it to the point where we're gonna do some work with a new stitch and a new color. So you can absolutely do that as well. Work up all three of your panels, the half double crochet repeated section, and then when we come back, we'll have a look at how to do the lace pattern. Now the lace pattern is very simple, but there are some subtle differences between the left and right panels, the front panels, and the back panels. So now once you've worked up that repeat for those three panels, again, I'm just working on a little swatch here, we're ready to fasten off. So when I do this, I like to pull the tail through the loop on my hook, but then I'm also going to flip it as if I would normally flip it. So then I'm working on this side here. Now go ahead and find your first stitch for this new row. Stick your hook in there just as a placeholder and we'll fasten on color B. So create your slip knot, place that loop on your hook, and pull it through, and we'll chain one. That's gonna secure this new join. It's also going to kind of be a placeholder there. The chain one does not count as our first stitch, but instead we're going to single crochet in that space. Now right now, I'm demonstrating the stitch pattern for the front two panels. And it's important to note that they are the same about halfway through the lace pattern. So the stitch pattern only starts to change once we get to this last half of the lace pattern. So let's work through the part where they are both the same. Now we've made our first single crochet in that first stitch and what we'll do is follow up by making one single crochet into each of the next three. Again, I'm working under both loops of the stitch. Now there we have a total of four single crochets. From here, we're gonna skip two stitches and we'll make two double crochets in the next. Then we'll chain two and make two more double crochets in the same stitch. Now we'll skip two and we'll single crochet into the next. Now that's our repeat for the lace section. We'll do that once more. I'll skip two and double crochet two times in the next chain two and two more double crochets. Now since I'm working on just a little swatch here, I've already reached the end of my row. So then I'll make one single crochet into each of the remaining three stitches. Then to move on to the next row, we'll chain one, turn our work, and we'll make one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. And now we can just sort of eyeball it. Find your chain two space, and in that we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets.
Then find your single crochet and we'll make a single crochet there. Then we'll jump over to our next chain two space. We'll work that repeat. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And then when you get to the end of your row, you'll make one single crochet into your last four stitches. So I always like to look at it from the top. It makes it a little easier. So I have one, two, three, four. That's how I know that's my first one. So that is the stitch pattern repeat for the lace section at the start of both of the front panels. So we're gonna work this repeat for a certain number of rows or until it measures a certain length. We'll work it until it gets to that point. It's dependent on your size, of course, so you'll refer to the written instructions for those specific details. But then you'll come to a point where there's a difference in the right and the left front panel. And all we're going to do in those instances is change the way we either start or end that row. Now for now, what we've been doing is making single crochets on each side. And what you'll realize is that because these stitches are so much shorter than these ones here, then it sort of will pucker out a little bit. And that is doing a lot of shaping for us because of course these are the front panels and it's going over the bust section. And so that really helps to give a nice fitted top. But we'll get to the point where we need it to be a little bit longer on the side as we kind of go up to our underarm area. And when we do that, what we'll do is work half double crochets instead of single crochets on one side, but we'll need to keep the single crochets on the other side to help form the shaping for the neckline. So when you get to that point in your pattern, you'll just wanna follow along very closely. It'll tell you the right side and the wrong side, and that's kind of one way you can figure out which panel you're working. So what I determine is the right side and the wrong side, honestly, I look at my double crochets. So looking at it from this side, get a nice clear picture of what that stitch looks like. It's a little bumpy. And then when we flip it over, this is what the double crochet looks like a little more traditionally. So this is what I call the front or the right side of the work. And I also know that this was the side that was facing me when I made this color transition. So if it's easier for you to go ahead and place a marker, a stitch marker, just anywhere on the front of it so you can see that, okay, this is the right side of the work from this point on. Then you'll work through your repeat. Now you're, depending on the size that you're working, it's either going to start off with half double crochets and end with single crochets or vice versa. What I like to do again is use a stitch marker to mark my neckline. So remember your single crochets are always going to correspond with your neckline. So when you get to that section, mark that side, just somewhere over on the side of the work here, just place a stitch marker there. So that's a visual cue for you to say, okay, I know I need to single crochet on these last four because this is my neckline. And when you get to the opposite side, you know you'll have to half double crochet and that's the side that'll be kind of going towards your underarm. Now you'll work through these two sections of the pattern and let's have a look at what that looks like once you've worked it up. So here I've got my, my two full front panels, the right and the left, just to demonstrate how the shaping looks. So you can kind of see that it's really puckered in this area and that's because again, those stitches are shorter and it's kind of pulling it down but that's giving us the perfect shaping for the bust area. Now you'll also notice I have two stitch markers. This is what I was talking about when I said, mark your neckline. So this is the neckline. This was my visual cue that whenever I was coming up to this end that I needed to single crochet because that was the neckline. Now you'll also note that from this point on, it looks a little bit different 
over on this side. And that's because I transitioned to half double crochets after this marker. So these two panels are identical, basically at the bottom. So I've got the big long half double crochet section, but all the way up until I get to this stitch marker. So single crochets on the neckline, single crochets on this side as well. And the transition to the half double crochet happens on this side for this panel. And it happens on this side for the other panel. Now the back is a lot less complicated because we don't need to do any shaping there. We can just continue on with our familiar stitch pattern with one small little difference. We can't use single crochets on the back of the panel because we're going to get this shaping, right? It's going to scrunch it up and we don't want it to be all bunchy on the back. So rather than using single crochets, we'll use half double crochets. So you'll find that reflected in your pattern as well. Just follow along with your familiar lace stitch pattern when you get to that point. But just know that at the ends of the, the sides there, you're going to be working with half double crochets instead of single crochets. So this is what the lace portion looks like on the back panel. Once again, we followed that same stitch repeat where we had two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. We have a single crochet in between those. The only difference here between the back panel and the front panel is over here on the sides. Rather than working in single crochets, we did a half double crochet in the last four stitches and in the first four stitches over on the other side. That's the only difference. So you followed that directly from the written instructions. And now we're ready to start joining things together. So now what we need to do is join the front panels to the back panel. And in order to do that, you'll find the right side of your back panel. Make sure that's facing up. And then you'll find the right side on one of your panels. And then you'll make sure the right side is facing down. We wanna have the seams on the inside and that's how we would do that. Now just to show you a quick example of what it looks like when it's stitched together, we're just stitching along this gray area or a half double crochet repeat, and then we're stitching just a little bit along the shoulder. So let me show you how to do that next. So now what I've done here is I've taken my opposite panel, again, making sure my necklines are facing each other. Those stitch markers show me that I'm doing that correctly and then I'll align the two gray sides. I'll start seaming right here. This is basically like the underarm. This is the bottom of the arm. So this is where we will start over on this side. Now, if you're working the other side, because the way we're crocheting, you'll end up starting down here and work that way. So the technique is the same. It doesn't matter which side you're working on. It's really just dictated by which panel you're seaming together. So take your new piece of yarn, create a slip knot, and then find your first row in this color. So for me, it's the gray color. And stick your hook through the side of both of those rows and place your loop on your hook. And I'm gonna chain one. So now find the next row and just stick your hook underneath that stitch on the one side and then over on the other side as well. Grab the yarn and pull through, and then pull this loop through this loop to make a slip stitch. This is one of my favorite ways to join panels together. It's much quicker, I think, than using a darning needle. However, you can do that if you're more comfortable with seaming instead of crocheting. Now also for me, I kind of eyeball it. It's a good idea or a good practice to make one slip stitch per row but that's not always going to be the case. If you follow that all the way through, you might have some puckering because the stitches are kind of short and then they're scrunching things together. So use your best judgment. Like right here, I would be most likely to just go ahead and put a slip stitch there on both sides. And then I'll find the next row down, just stick my hook next to that stitch on both sides and slip stitch. And we're just gonna do this until we get to the end of our panel. Also, one other little word of caution is that you make sure you're trying to keep it aligned as best you can because 
when you get to the point down here, and let's say your panels have shifted in some way, well then you might end up with one side that's longer than the other. Or if you're seaming the other side together and you're working up this way to where it meets our contrast color, then this might be shifted as well, and then it'll kind of look funny because our, our lines won't match up. So just eyeball it every so often, every few stitches or so, I'll take a look at the end and make sure I'm on the right track. So now when you get to the end of your row, we can go ahead and fasten off. So trim yourself a nice long tail so we can weave it in later. And then pull that tail through the loop on your hook. Give that a pull. Now we have just one other little place we need to join and that's up at the shoulders. So now grab your contrast color and create your slip knot. And you'll want to follow the written instructions for this because we're gonna take a different size seam depending on the size that you're working on. And I'll stick my hook into both of the stitches, both of the double crochets on each side. Pull that through and chain one. And just like before, I'm gonna slip stitch for each one of my stitches. So I'll find that next post on both sides, put my hook in there and make a slip stitch. And when you get to these chain two gap spaces, just go ahead and stick your hook into the space and slip stitch. And when you get to the end, we can go ahead and fasten off again, leave yourself a tail that's six to eight inches long. Just you can weave that in later. Pull the tail through the loop on your hook. Now go ahead and seam your other panel together and then we'll have a, a quick look at the finishing touches. So now what we'll do is we will align the two open parts of our front panel and go ahead and stitch those together just like we did the sides. So with slip stitches here in the side of that work. Again, I'm doing this on the wrong side so that way I don't have this obvious seam in the front, it's a little bit more clean. Now when you get to this section where you have your contrast color, it's a good idea to go ahead and switch back to that contrast color. So that way you are joining now with the contrast color and not, in my case, this gray because that will definitely show through. So just like before, grab it, make a slip knot, Place that on your hook, chain one, and then slip stitch the two sides together. Then once you finish seaming all the way to the top, then we can just fasten off. So I've cut that, pull that tail through the loop on my hook, and now all that's left to do is weave in all of these ends. Be sure to share your progress photos with me on social using hashtag BeHooked. I look forward to seeing that and I look forward to you subscribing to the BeHooked YouTube channel as well. If you love to knit and you love to crochet, this is the place for you. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.